Marshall skips away. Marshall skips away. Marshall's still going. Marshall's got Richards coming up outside. Now inside. Arsenal have gone through an entire league campaign without losing. Bennett and the Dragons win the grand final. Whips that one away and Kane Williamson and his team now world test champions. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the TGIF podcast. Thank God it's footy. It's our um, last weekend of uh, eight games of footy, jam-packed. It's the end of our two seasons. Um, yeah, well, uh, the, yep, if you're 16th and 17th. If you're 16th and 17th, that's the end of your season, unfortunately, when you get into yep. September. So we are into our last week of uh, regular season footy. Uh, eight games to go, obviously. We've already said goodbye to the Parramatta Eels. Yep. Uh, for the season, this season is done. Obviously not making the eight and having the bye this week. So, um, unsure whether or not they've had their Mad Monday already. Do they have their Mad Monday possibly Monday gone? Yeah, just yesterday. Just yesterday, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll have to ask. I'll ask Imogen tomorrow. I'll yep, see if she's got any inside scoop on whether or not the Eels... Uh, had had their Mad Monday celebrations yesterday or not, but uh, we are we're down to the the nitty gritty. We've been saying it for a few weeks now. We're down to crunch time, but you know we're um, uh, crunch is done. You know if you're not crunching by now, you're fucked. I think. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of teams with a bit of crunching to do this weekend. It is. Um, it's all on. You know, it's a bit of a a loggerhead there, uh, sort of sitting around the bottom of the eight there. So interesting to see. Uh, how it all turns out, what we've got teed up for us for first week of finals. But um, now we haven't really, you know, we, we touch on it every now and again. We don't really touch on it too much because we're not usually that successful. But uh, it is a big week in terms of the betting this week. You uh, have officially, you know, you, you're into the positives now. Yeah, back above. Uh, above head that. above water yeah. finally which is good um, leaving me down down below oxygen tanks well and truly gone uh, probably sort of sinking now but yeah you have to sort of reel in um, a few big boys I've so got um, you've seen a couple I've got a few uh, outrageous looking ones just to finish off the year one thousand swoop not maybe. just the year obviously we've still got a few more rounds left um, but yeah I just had I had to go all out there's only one way of getting in the lead now and that's by putting on silly bets so uh that's what i've done yep that's that's the plan for this week uh if i can just pull off one of those i'm in the lead ideally that last one would be uh would be perfect um now some blokes who did uh have a pretty hot week hot weekend uh you could say uh are the blokes who have made the team of the week for this week now uh it's got a slight Sunday bias here. Those were probably my two, barring the uh, barring the Tigers game, which even then I kind of you know the last fifteen or so minutes, I'd kind of switched off by that stage. You know it was hard, um, but uh, Sunday was kind of it kind of had my full attention. Um, so it has got a bit of a slight Sunday bias, but that's all right. Um, yeah, Sunday I was a little bit distracted by um, Austin. Shout out uh, the new neighbour. The new na- yeah, shout out the new um, neighbour. So that kind of threw me a little bit off guard. Had a few things to do as well. Weeding. You were in the garden yeah, and doing some weeding. Um, so, um, so I didn't get to catch the footy live, but caught up, caught up Sunday evening. It was good. A um, few blokes who played Sunday afternoon. First off, Cola. Cola. Cola, Cola at the back. Taking um, the one, yeah. Taking the one jersey for Manly this week and doing a hell of a job of it in Ruben Garrick's absence. Well, I think as well, you know, you take in, you know, Ruben Garrick's in some pretty big, got some pretty big sized boots on, you know, wearing Tommy Turbo's boots, so they're that little bit larger than his. And you then chuck Cola into not only Garrick's boots, but into Tommy Turbo's boots. So you're wearing three, He's pairs, wearing of, three, pairs, three pairs of boots. Three pairs of boots while you're out there running around playing a game of footy and you put in a performance that Cola did. Uh, I think there's no way that you can't be um, selected in the team of the week. Joined there, uh, two wingers, Greg Marju, another Sunday. He uh, he had a pretty awesome performance there for the Knights. And then Mike Acevo, uh on the other wing in their final game of the season. Yep, four meeties for the big fella there. Um, 
up against Penrith. So huge performance from uh, the flying Fijian. Um, um, Mars, you got two, I believe. I want to say off the top of my head. Okay, yep. Uh, so yep, I, I think, think that I think you're all right. Yep. Uh, so there's six there for you two wingers again. Uh, it's a tri and uh, back line. It's sort of sort of what what you're after, uh, I guess. The big boys uh, do the grunty work and the, the backs score the tries. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they can take all the glory. Uh, and joined there in the centres by two other players now. One, I do know, got himself a couple of meetings and had a good game, and that was Bradman Best. Uh, and we've we've gone for Labour there as your other centre. Yeah, he had a good game, uh, barring his uh, spectacular shot on um, Jermaine Osako there. Um, I'm not sure if I've seen it. Psycho, or maybe it was Hammer, but he took someone out in the air and he's on report for it. But um, yeah, had a great game, the young centre. Um, yeah, haven't seen much of him for the Cowboys apart from those couple of times when um, they've rested a few players over the last couple of years. But had a stormer uh, up against the Finns. Yeah, and it makes his uh, takes his debut over there in the team of the week. So shout out to him. Uh, this your back five. Now, the halves pairing this week, we've opted for the old Carey-DCE combination. Now, uh, DCE bringing it back to his best uh, there on a Sunday afternoon, involved with quite a few tries, and I uh, thought the the highlight of his weekend, handing over the kicking duties to uh, Gordon chan Kum tom I believe is the is the right order there of the surnames. Uh, on debut, had a bit of a crowd there, and he passed over the kicking duties right in front of the post, sort of near the end of the game. So one of the great names uh, in rugby. Oh, league without already. a doubt, and he was seems a seems, he's a bit of a Caden Milne in terms of you know maybe smiling like smiling assassin. Smile assassin. Yeah, now he was he was nearly la in laughter, uh, you know, when he was actually taking the kick. You know, he kind of could, just couldn't believe what was going on. <coughs> crowd of about one hundred and fifty. Uh, supporters there cheering his name on well, not obviously more I'd say by that stage but uh, you know p people that he'd brought along so uh, shout out DCE for you know giving, giving the young bloke his moment there yeah and also had himself a half decent game of footy as well and uh, what was DCA. was it his was it a milestone match there for DCE as well I may be wrong there saying that it was a, there was a milestone match for he played his oh, 300th a few weeks it, ago. It me? might have been that. Maybe I'm thinking, because we, what, we had one in the Warriors game, maybe is where I'm, I'm getting a bit mixed up. Someone's, it was someone something. Someone's 200? Against you you guys. Toe Harris? Possibly. I believe. Or 100th game for the Warriors, maybe I it was. I think it might be Sean Johnson's 250th this week. Or was it that? Is it this week? This week um, coming up, I think. Uh, but either you way, might be right. Either way, DCE honest. had a bloody good game, I can tell you that. And Paul Luke Carey, we haven't even spoke about him yet. He also had a blinder. Yeah, um, unfortunate for you. He uh, he was front and centre of tearing apart the Tigers there um, Saturday night. I thought I was in for a 5pm kickoff. Yeah. Um, I thought I was yeah, late. I was like, uh, oh shit, I'm going to be late. I'm going to have to I zoom back myself two home. hours and then watch it because I just got in at 7. And then I was like, oh. Well, I put it on and then it said um, Tigers was I had, yeah. until 9.30. I, I, just, I just had the, the 5 p.m. kickoff in my head for some reason and then, yeah, it was just getting set Absolutely up. Absolutely done. And I had to go super shopping. I was yeah. like, fuck. Like, I tuned in and the thought, Tigers wow, game. what the fuck's going on here? Check the check the website and thought, Jesus, we've got a lot of time to, you know, go and get yourself a feed and play a bit of darts for a little bit while that first game's cranking, you know. Um, just delay the inevitable a little bit longer, I guess. Um but yeah, there's your, there's your backs. Now we move into that forward combo and making his way back into the team to join DCE. So you've got the double, double barrel this week. Uh, AFB is one of your props, joined there by Sipley, uh, another one of your Sunday men uh, there. It's two pretty two pretty solid performances there on the on the weekend. Sipley, he had a, had a great game. He had a... a, a 30, 40 meter run there at one stage in the first half where he looked like he was one of those one of the backs. Yep. Uh, unreal. Uh, and AFB just pretty solid as usual. Yep, hundred percent. Um two big men with yeah, plenty of skill, plenty of plenty of power, but a little bit of finesse to him too. Uh, and we saw that on the weekend's footy. Uh, more so from Sipley than uh, AFB, but yeah, uh, great game for both 
uh, aforementioned proppers uh, and sitting in between them in that front row. Uh, Harry Grant thought he had a great game for Melbourne. Um, cemented their top four spot, which was, um, yeah, pretty pretty massive achievement when you think of how many players they've lost over the years and they just keep doing it. Yeah, it's um, credit to, obviously, the setup that they've got there and Harry Grant, uh, a big piece of... That, that, that sort of... Uh, I think his his form with Hughes and Munster, you know, they could get something going in the finals. Uh, you know, oh, yeah, no happens. doubt. They could be a dark horse. No I one's think, really talking about them. Everyone's just talking about Penrith and Brisbane. Yeah, when you get to finals footy, that's a, that's a, you know, I've said it a few times, it's a different kettle of fish, you know, so it's, um, you know, I don't... Especially if you've got to go like, down to Melbourne. A team like Melbourne, you know, like, doesn't matter how good you're playing, you know, it's a big, it's a big match, whoever you're playing there, really, in that finals footy, so... Uh, but no, well done to Harry Grant. He did get a, a really solid performance and makes his way into that hooking role there. Uh, now, a little bit of uh, selection headaches maybe here in terms of your second rows. Now, again, huge Sunday bias in terms of this. We've gone for Frizzell and Lucas there from the Knights. Now, I personally think Frizzell was the best player on the park there in that game. Uh, and then shout out Lucas for one of the, the the great cramps of rugby league. Um, you don't really see a bit of cramp. Kind of shout out to that uh, Japanese baseball player talking about the cramps, you know, eating the bananas. Lucas yeah. has to have a yarn to this bloke, uh, get himself a few more bananas involved. Commentators were loving it, saying the pickle juice ain't going to work. He was rigid as, rigid as stone. Uh, <laughs> so they both, both unites second rise there, make their way into the team this week, and they're joined... Uh, by the workhorse himself, Cam McInnes, uh, there at lock. Yep, unfortunately on the uh, losing side there on Sunday afternoon up against Newcastle, but when you're, I guess, under the pump, there's probably no better bloke you'd want on your on your team uh, to be making tackles with you. Yeah, we saw it there that game where they were what, home to nil, uh, and he, he broke the record there, so... He is, he's a, he's a workhorse, he's a bit of a tackling machine. So uh, there's your, your team of the week for this week. We will, we will be able to bring you our last regular season team of the week next week. And that is when I will have to go back. We'll do some uh, some calculations, see who see who's made that team of the season, I guess. Uh, yep. And then we'll go for a little team of the finals. Uh, I guess we, you know, you've got to break it down. You know, players come alive, I think, when it comes to the finals. Yeah, you can't include uh, finals appearances, otherwise it's a bit unfair on those bo uh, bottom nine teams. Yeah, well, yeah, some people may argue that they don't deserve to be in the team. Of the they season. do the Dally M's after uh, the regular season, don't so, they? They don't include finals. No, you're right. So we will... We'll do um, it the same way. We will, after next week, we'll be able to get in there, get a team of the season going for you. But before then... We do have this weekend's footy to uh, get into, sink our teeth into. We start off with some Thursday night footy action. Brisbane up against Melbourne. Now, both teams coming away with wins over the weekend. And one team coming in, or both teams actually, coming into this looking completely different. Both having rested uh, quite a few big names going into the... Um, potentially for Brisbane, um, a game to secure that minor premiership. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Uh, Brisbane could lock in that, that minor minor premiership this week, uh, so it is interesting that they've decided to <clears throat> call on the backup brigade as such. But, um, yeah, Melbourne as well. Uh, I guess both of them, either way, the worst Brisbane can finish is second, the best they can finish is first. So it doesn't make a difference. They get the home semi either way. Um, and Melbourne, the best they can finish is third. The worst they can finish is fourth. So either way, they've got their uh, away semi there. So I think that might be in the thinking for the coaches. Um, disappointing, I guess, that we don't get to see the big names because it could have been a, a very mouth-watering clash on the eve of the finals, um, particularly as things stand, first versus fourth, we could see the same game next week. Yeah. Um, depending on results. Possibly that's the thinking, you know, maybe give these blokes a rest and then, you know, the you know, the the first teams can come up the week after if it does end up like that, you know. 
does it end up like that? Possibly. Well, I think if Melbourne win, uh, the Warriors have to lose for them to come third. But if Brisbane win, obviously that's them locking it in. Minor premiums. So, yeah, it's an interesting one. Both teams, obviously, off off uh, pretty good wins last week. But, um, yeah, we'll have to see how it goes on Thursday night with the, the backup. It's a, it's a harder one, one to pick for you players that you've... Teams. You know, unless you... Uh, you know, follow their team as such. You know, a couple of players that are coming through from New South Wales Cup, something like that. Obviously, not quick Q Cup yeah, for both not of these in this teams. game, you know, yeah. Um, but it is, it's, um, it is a harder game to go. I've sort of, um, you know, looking at the way I've gone there, I, I do kind of regret not doing a little switch up like you did when we did see the, um, see the team must come out. But it is, it's, um, it's, it's tricky, I think, this one here. Yeah. I just think it's, it's an unusual. And, and I do understand the thinking of, you know, not necessarily needing it, but how good would it be to take the take the minor premiership off Penrith there? And know? another good omen for Brisbane, every time they've won the minor premiership, they've gone on to win the grand final as well. So. There you go. So I don't know, I think it's a little bit unusual. Some of these players, you know, they've played, you know, you think of someone like Payne Haas, like, yeah, it's handy to give him a rest, but he doesn't need a rest, you know? Yeah, he's a machine. Yeah, he's, he's you know, he's... He's not human, some of these blokes, you know. So, um, it is, it's an interesting one. So, who knows how it turns out there on Thursday. But uh, I'll be hoping for a Brisbane win in terms of one of my bet to come off just to try and creep back that little bit of, a little bit, big bit of um, deficit that I'm in there. So, I've gone for a, a Brisbane 1 to 12 win. Uh, drawing record across the trail and it's going to get me $11.25 so uh, about a what a seventh of the way uh, a bit more than a seventh a yeah a seventh. of the difference yeah. um, so that'll be a, that'll be a good way to start uh, Thursday night get on a roll uh, going into the weekend but you'll be hoping that mine doesn't come off as well because that'll mean a, a little $6 buffer uh, increase for me uh, near to there because I've gone Pap, Oats and Katoa all to cross the line that's going to get you $17.11 um, yeah just throw out a few darts at the dartboard I suppose with the uh, the Reggies running out um, yeah who knows what's going to happen but hopefully those three cross the stripe for myself nothing, nothing wrong with that whatsoever uh, Friday night Friday night sees the end of two more teams in our off seasons. Uh, is Manly up against the West Tigers? Now, the Man- Manly Sea Eagles on the weekend, rock bloody hot. I gotta say, up against the Doggies, a big win for them there. Uh, looking a lot tastier than my Tigs, who uh, fell pretty hard against the Roosters in the end there. Yeah. Um, look. This one, I think, all but locks in the spoon. If you can pick up a huge win, uh, as long as as well as the Dragons picking up a huge loss, uh, or if one of them's big enough, record breaking, um, it could go either way. But what I say they need to do, come out. It would be huge scrutiny. It could fuck the club even more out. But you come out and you go, sorry team, sorry everyone, we did a miscount on Brooksy's stats. First of all, they're going to bring him back because he's injured. But, you know, he's going to mirac- miraculously recover. He comes back into the starting lineup. Sorry, guys, there was a fuck out. This is actually his 200th game. You know? Somehow find a way to play that off. We come out. Brooksy plays. They have another blinder. You go out and you beat. You know, you win this game 66-6. to six. There's a 60-point swing. If you guys can go out there and lose by 30, you've got the spoon. Uh, yeah, look, I think that's the only hope. Uh, yeah, not much I can really say. Um, I guess good luck, but I don't really want it to come off. Um, either way, uh, but yeah, Manly, as you said, they're playing pretty hot uh, on the weekend, so it's going to be a tough, tough one to to rack up a sixty point win against them. Uh, they racked. And 42 points themselves and probably left two or three tries um, begging, I guess you could say, with um, a couple of hash finishes, uh, a few too many errors on the day. Um, if you want to be super, I guess, critical, but 
yeah, look, it's going to be tough for the Tigers this weekend, but um, yeah, let's like hopefully they can finish the season on a good night. I think if we play nice. anything, if we play anything like we did on the weekend, maybe we play anything. Maybe like you that. can hope. Manly have already had their mad Monday. Yeah, I somehow I they got confused with that matter. <laughs> I somehow I somehow don't see that happening. I think it's going to be a pretty tough, uh, a tough one there uh, on the weekend for the Tigers. But I guess the only positive is that it is on Friday rather than Sunday. I don't have to wait until Sunday to um, have to forego the torture, I guess. Um, but hey, if we can get ourselves a win, if we can somehow hope for a huge Dragons loss, something just, something diabolical happens, you know, like, not diabolical in the sense of, you know, disastrous, but like, Tomorrow, the whole Dragons first team squad, all the top COVID. 30. No, not COVID, but like they go and have seafood somewhere and they're all fucked. And they're all but, both, uh, both all ends. Circa 1995. Both, both ends, you know, and it's like the full. What? And two years later, it comes out that who was the chef? Robbie Farah. Robbie Farah. <laughs> He's in Got the, some dodgy the, seafood. Some scampy fucking chowder or something. Um, Either way, I've stuck with stuck with my guns. It hasn't come off yet. I will be continuing it on into next year. That is the Tigers one to twelve and to Buller. Thirteen thirty nine. It keeps fluctuating around sort of the ten ten to fourteen dollar mark. Um, you know, ideally we continue to lose and he doesn't score, so it just creeps up and up and up. Um, but also kind of want it to come off, so hopefully it just continues to drop. Um, it would be nice to maybe try and you know mix it up a little bit for a Tigers game, but I'm gonna have to stick with it now. So last time this year, maybe you can start fresh next year. I'm gonna continue on. I think it's just until, it, until it comes off. Comes off. All so right. uh, Tigers went to twelve into Buller. Not too shabby. Uh, Thirteen thirty nine there. Um, I've just gone nice and simple. West one to twelve, five bucks. I mean, man. I I don't know. Hopefully, Manly have. Played their best footy last week. Tigers can come out. One last good performance against the odds. Um, yeah, five bucks be handy. Uh, but anyway, moving on to the blockbuster uh, of Friday night, the one that most people out there will be looking forward to. Um, basically, a knockout game there to see who who takes maybe seventh or, or eighth. There, I think the Roosters need a. A big points difference swing as well, uh, potentially, if the Cowboys pick up a win. But um, for the time being, I think whoever wins will slot into the top eight. Souths up against Roosters, the old rivalry. Yeah, really tasty looking matchup, obviously. Like you said, there are lots to play for uh, in this one here. And it is, it's a, it's a big rivalry there. And um, what a, what a last way for both of those teams to finish up their regular seasons, eh? Last year we saw this one with seven sin bins, was it? That nutty ass oh, game. Oh, that miss game, yep. I do remember that one there. Um, it must have been year seven, six or seven, something <laughs> like that. So um, I don't know if it'll be anything like that again. But a couple of years ago we saw the trail try and take off Joey Manu's face. Uh, which saw him banned on their yep. run to the grand final. Yep, I do remember that as well. So, um, uh, a bit of a bit of flavour, a bit of juice behind this rivalry over the last couple of years. Um, and with the top eight spot on the line, it's going to be whew, extra spicy. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm looking. It's, it's definitely um, the uh, the selectors, the fixture pickers at the start of the season have done well here with this one. Yeah, uh, it's a it's a pretty tasty matchup. Uh, don't, somehow I don't think this one was randomly selected. No, I think this one would have been teed up on such yeah, a Friday. Yeah. We've also well, you've also got Penrith Cowboys there. Uh, that that one there's a, a pack where you've got Broncos Storm on your Thursday, and then here's your oh Canberra. I guess that's a nice looking like that could fucking drop Canberra out of the eight. Um, yeah, interesting, interesting. But back to Friday night, um, as we said before, the Chooks um, downing your Wests there, 32 points to 8. Um, things got a bit spicy in that one though, to be honest. Uh, Big Jared, he's uh, copped himself a six-week ban yeah, for so two sure separate well, uh, incidents there. One of them I think he should have been, the one that he got banned for, 
He could have got sent off for nearly. The one where he took Appy's head off? Yeah. Yeah. Is Appy not injured? Is no, he's playing. No, he's a beast. So I think they must have chucked in a bit of fucking extra shit in there when he broke the jaw, you know, to stabilise it, you know, so he was, he's sweet. Um, but yeah, that was a, it was a monster hit. And then uh, Steph and um, a couple of the other Tigers, young bulls, managing to to rack up the old ball with a bit of um, yeah, it was, wash up and yesterday's man. Uh, was, see, that's have, what they are young have seen that, Yeah. So um, interesting. Um, I guess from the Tigers' it's, uh, point of view, getting up when you <coughs> when you're, when you're down in a game uh, in seventeenth, but I guess they managed to to do. Well, every team seems to be able to do every now and then. Rock, uh, Jared. Get under a skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the way the red line. Um, and then they went down to 12 and they probably played their best footy, I reckon, of the night nearly. <laughs> like, they were awesome when they when they were down a man. So, um, oh, it's a, it is, like you said, it's a block by this one um, here up against the Bunnies. Yep, they'll be missing um, Jared. Uh, Teddy's back, I believe, but Joey Manu might be out. Let's have a look at these team lists because I know Latrell Mitchell is out, obviously, with that out. elbow. I believe he dropped into Tyson Frizzell the other week. There yeah. we go. Taff instead of Mitchell. Um, Teddy's back. Oh, Manu's playing. So Manu's injury mustn't have been too bad, but obviously, Jared missing. Um, <clears throat> pretty Mason similar to last week. Host and Haveli probably not huge outs for South, but yeah, um, lots of talk about the trail last couple of days. Obviously, with um, the whole uh, drama we had last week around South, and um, now the Rodney Churchill shit that's come out. Um, Saw you saw that just maybe like an hour ago. It was pretty hectic. Um, yeah, um, South Sydney looking to get their big man to to turn to turn his form around so he can um, shut those critics up. Um, but I think while he continues to maybe not bring his best on the footy field, um, as highlighted by some pretty damning footage on NRL 360 oh, the other week. Um, that was people bad. are going to talk about him. So. Yeah, well and truly. Like, it's, it's rough, I think, when you get... Although, this Rodney Churchill thing, it's like, obviously that was a text from a few months ago and shit, but it's like, well, people need to take it a bit easier. You know, we saw what happened with um, Carl Turner the other week, obviously um, passed away. Um, yeah, don't want to... Don't want to push people out there too far and lose them to the game, uh, or, or worse, you know. Um, yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's a bit rough, I think, the way he's As been. you were saying before, um, he is a very polarising figure, and some people just plain don't rate him. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think he's... As highly as other people. I don't think he's do. anything that special, I've got to say, Latrell. I mean, I do, I do think he does get... You know, he, don't get me wrong, he's you know, a hell of a better footy player than I'd ever be, that's for sure. And he can have one of those games where he just looks like one of the best players there is. But I think, you know, like we did see up against whoever it was that they, that footage is from, I can't remember, was that like Newcastle. Newcastle. It was incredibly lazy. I, you shouldn't be attacked the way that you were, like he was by Churchill there, don't you? No, not at all. But I just don't think he should possibly maybe have that high expectations on them to be able to lead the team. You know, like, Souths are a very good team. They've got other players around them that you know, possibly the expectations can be shared around a bit more, you know. Like, if he's at a team that's sort of, you know, sitting down there in the bottom four or something like that, and you are one of the biggest names by a country mile, you know, it's a bit different. But, like, yeah, I just think he probably gets a little bit too much expectations put on him. And I don't think he really not necessarily deserves it or needs it. It's, you know, I don't know if it's either of those things, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just not, yeah, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not on the trail train, I guess you could say. Yep. Well, he, but he won't be, um, he won't be, scary, he won't be on the train this Friday night either. He's, he's banned, unfortunately. So 
It's a Latrell Liss uh, South vs. Roosters Derby. It's a Jared Liss uh, South vs. Roos Roosters Derby. So, um, still going to be very spicy. Uh, I see we're, we're just sitting on either side of the fence. Um, well, I just wanted to go the opposite so that it was something, you know, I'm, all I've kind of, my bets this week, I've kind of just tried to really. Well, well I've, done, I've done it in every week, but I'm just trying to get into the lead this week. I don't know really if I should be, what's the word, uh, hopeful of any of these bets, to be fair, but um, the way my, my luck has been with them this year. But I've gone for the Roosters. Roosters 1-12 uh, into Billy Smith. A tick over $10, $10.33. A uh, little bit more than uh, your... Your bet there? Yep, uh, a little bit more. So, South 1 to 12 into Cody Walker anytime, uh, 7.21. I was going to say you could make a little $3 dent in me, but obviously those two can't simultaneously come off. So, yeah, whichever way it, it goes, hopefully um, Walker and Smith uh, are try scorers, so it keeps it. I guess juicy for us as well. Uh, yeah, as an ideal. Would be good. Uh, but that's your Friday. Now your Saturday footy. We start off with the Finns up against the Waz. Now the Dolphins, uh, unfortunately, losing to the Cowboys there on the weekend by twenty four. Uh, and the Waz, we were lucky enough to go and view this game live, uh, scraping home uh, up against your Dragons there. Yeah, uh, look, 18-6, the scoreline there looks a little bit more comfortable possibly than it was for the Warriors on the night with the Dragons uh, also scoring two more times uh, that were disallowed. Um, Warriors had one disallowed themselves as well. Um, but yeah, it was it was a bit of a seesawing affair. Uh, the Warriors got on top early, um, a lot of pressure, but couldn't really convert it into points um they've been a little bit uh, they haven't been showing their they've, best i think they've fallen off in like the last month or so. yeah if they you know we go we we harp on about this uh week on week after week uh you want to be you know finding that that peak as you, you're coming into the playoffs uh the finals there you don't want to be falling off a cliff um which the warriors definitely aren't doing but um yeah, look, a 12-point victory at home um, against the team running 16th, you'd probably be probably be thinking the Warriors would be hoping for a little bit better than that. Um, <clears throat> it's nothing against my Dragons, of course, who probably played a, a lot better than everyone would have expected as well. Uh, a couple of, well, one good try against the run of play and a couple of almost tries against the run of play, particularly that uh, 15 second effort, which would have been an NRL record for the quickest ever try. Yeah, crazy, um, eh? What a start that would have been. Not as quick as one that I saw in the Super League, seven seconds. Jesus. As as the ball just like was bouncing from um, the kickoff and the speedy winger like got it. And it just bounced Bounced up perfectly for him. It was insane. I'll show you it after this. Oh yeah, that was that was a um, crazy start to the game. That one there. So it would have been pretty cool if that had come off. Yeah, it would have. Um, I was standing up, cheering. Um, I kind of cheered for both teams. I yeah, found. it was a tough one for you. You needed yeah. the dragons to lose. I needed the dragons the... to lose, but I didn't really want to support the warriors, and I had you my tigers supporting the warriors. I had my tigers flags, so I kind of just, you know, quite often it was defense. And I was going, where's Tigers? Where's Tigers? You know, so you've kind of, it was, I was kind of in limbo. Uh, a few people, uh, to be fair, not too many uh, actually gave me too much stick. I wasn't too, I guess I, ha I had high hopes. More stick on the way into the game, actually. We had one bloke who game. didn't really give me stick. It was quite good, but he was, he was outside and he, he was off to the wrong game, bro. Uh, or really, no, you're a couple of weeks late or something like that. So it was, it was, um, it was, a, it was a, not as packed as I thought either. They, you know, they bumped it up above twenty five thousand there. Yeah, um, I think there might have been a little bit of fudging with by those numbers. Twenty minutes to go, we had people in front of us already leaving, which I thought was a bit iffy. 
uh, 10 minutes ago, it was there was a steady flow of, you know, maybe three or four people heading out the door, you know. So um, you may be looking at 20,000 by the time the odd uh, attendance gets chucked up on the on the stage, I mean, on the silver screen, sorry. That's probably how many tickets they sold because... A couple of people We sat. had one that... We had one that didn't, didn't come. come. There's also, you know, at my work, there's, you know, we've got a we've got a stomach bug ripping through our school at the moment. So, could have been a few people maybe sick with stomach bug at that time of the season when you got the flu. You know, I've got a little bit of sniffle still at the moment. So, uh, you know, there's, it, you know, we could be, you could be maybe scraping the barrel at like a twenty one thousand, uh, possibly. It didn't look as packed as um, previous Warriors games we've been to. Yeah. Um... It was, there, there definitely were some empty seats around, um, but I guess the Warriors, uh, they're picking up the wins, uh, the Dolphins, their opponents this week. It'll be a tough ask uh, for the Warriors to pick up the win, considering they're calling on their backup brigade. They have, they've um, rested a whole heap uh, of the squad this week. Is Johnson playing? No, uh, Johnson's been rested. So uh, it's 250th will be the... Um, Finals, first week of the finals, then I think, um, or maybe, maybe it already was. Maybe it was I, Johnson's. I feel game. like it was. That's what. I, like I swear it was Sean Johnson's two fiftieth and Tahu Harris's hundred for the Warriors. Yeah. 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 It was. Shout out. Shout out. Sean yeah. Johnson. Belated shout out, Sean Johnson, for your 250th. Um, uh, pretty bad from us, considering we're at the game. Surely we're, they must, we must have said something about that. Yeah. I think Ben might have said something to me about it. But um, I was kind of just fritting out about sitting next to Rami, to be honest, when we rocked <laughs> up. So like the early stage of the game, I was looking down at the Dragons boys warming up in front of us, which was kind of sick. And then... Um, yeah, for a minute about sitting next to Rami. Um, Shout out Rami, always nice to meet new people, yeah, one of our minds mates. I've today. already met him before, yeah. he's a good dude. I was just yeah. thinking like, oh, like, is he going to be sweet with sitting next to me? Like, yeah, would he um, rather sit next to Nat and Rami? Nah, good on him, me, it was uh, good to get a... Like, Good to get a so nice mix. Might Good to get a nice mixture of people out there to the game. Got Osh out to a game of game of league. Shout out Osh. Speaking of tummy bugs, also currently at home, uh, out the out the back end, I believe. Ooh. Shout out Osh. Don't know if you're going to rate me saying this, but it's out there to the world now. Um, sending sending condolences out to you, my friend. Um, but um, yeah, it was a it was a good good game there on Friday. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a tough ask here for the uh, for, the, for the Warriors. Sorry, and this one, uh, like we said, the reserves coming out to play. Um, does it really matter if if they have a loss? No, no I think know, if they really. lose and um, Melbourne nothing win, changes, then they swap positions so, third and fourth. Uh, again, it's an it's an interesting one. Um, I have, which is very unusual for me. I've stuck with the Warriors. I've uh, been on them a little bit recently, and I've gone with them again. It's hard to kind of hard to back the fin. So Warriors went to twelve into Asako and Montoya uh, to cross the try line. Twelve dollars and nineteen cents. Yeah. Uh, not bad value, uh, considering Asako is basically um, an automatic lock to score each week. Um, so I've also chucked him in my multi. Uh, shout out Jermaine. Um, also Montoya, and then I've just chucked in Lemu Alu instead of uh, the Warriors result there, and that's get, getting me eleven ninety seven. Uh, so round it up to twelve, I suppose. If you're pretty close, feeling generous, pretty close um, there for for both of us, and that's that's a tricky one there because if you're paying cash, you're gonna have to pay twelve bucks for yeah. something if it's eleven ninety seven. Yeah, exactly. So it's a tricky one if they both come off there. It doesn't give me too much uh, extra there. Um, but that's your first game for your Saturday. It's, yeah, again, another lovely, uh, lovely placed game here by the fixture pickers, I guess, in terms of when you're looking at last season. Penrith up against the Cowboys now. Uh, and what was one of the big shocks of the weekend? Penrith uh, suffering quite a, a hearty loss in the end there 
up against the Eels on Thursday night. A hearty loss uh, on the scoreboard and a hearty loss to their squad with uh, Jerome Lua mm. going off uh, injured. He's, Super rough. Um, yeah, looking like he might be back uh, preliminary final at best. So, yeah, hopefully we do get to see him for Penrith's sake because um, I think stats tell you that uh, with Lua in the team, they actually win more than with Cleary in the team. That is also because Luai debuted later and like they've been more dominant since, since yep. Cleary debuted five, you know, or maybe like seven, eight years ago. But still, you know, it's a big one. Uh, he he dominates um, at the NRL level. Um, obviously maligned for a couple of his performances this year um, at Origin. But yeah, definitely a player that Penrith will miss, I think. Uh, over these next couple of weeks. But in saying that, we have seen them deal with injuries uh, pretty relatively breezily before. Like, uh, Clary was out of the side for a number of weeks earlier the year, uh, in this year. Um, Cogger slotted into the side, and him and Luai seem to do pretty well together, so I don't see why uh, him and Clary don't do reasonably well together over the next few weeks. Um, up against yeah, the Cowboys, they're going to need to win to make the eight. So it's a pretty big one for them. Um, I think they'll be hoping like hell that Brisbane win on Thursday night, which means that we'll probably see a number of Penrith players rested, knowing that they can't move any position. They're locked in in second there. Wouldn't want to risk... Um, Injuring Nathan, uh, Isaiah Yo, uh, Liam Mullen, and any of those blokes. We might see them get a rest. James Fisher Harris. Yeah. Um, it's, Dylan Edwards as well, possibly Crichton. I think, yeah, I think you're probably right there. If it does end up uh, that Brisbane take the win, uh, we, probably, we probably will see them. We'll plans and we'll be hoping for that. Um, which will obviously make it a lot easier there for the Cowboys. Um, but yeah, the Cowboys, you know, not probably sitting where they expecting themselves to be at the start of the season obviously not being able to really live up to the I don't know if it's living up to the hype but just taking having a few bad patches of of, of form there where they really struggled um and you know, early on yeah, yeah when you're we've always I've, I've, well, we've always said it but we've said it a few times you know when you're chasing uh it's a lot easier being chased than being the chaser more more often than not um so yeah interesting one there come Saturday I've uh, I've picked my bet based on the possibility of that I can't really be fucked having to change it or having to work out if something's changed, like what we had sort of talked about before. Yeah. Uh, now, Tyron Peachy, I don't think, is the, is, the, is the bloke that's going to get rested. I somehow think, uh, unfortunately, he, he still will be involved there in that game. I don't know if he's... What's happened to Mr. Indefinite? Who's that? Isaac Tungle. Is he still... Injured, or is he possibly just in reserves because Peachy came in and played well? I'm not too sure. I must still be in, must still be injured. I'm guessing. Yeah, because yeah, you said it was an inde indefinite injury, bro. Oh, Back in a, a couple of weeks ago, I can't, and then we you've, fucking, poof, you've 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 thrown you off. You've, off thrown, you've thrown me off a little bit there, uh, yeah, and I. And um, it's, I have to sort of get into the memory banks there to try and um, figure out what's going on there. But I've gone for Tyron Peachy. I don't think he gets dropped. He's going to try to cross the try line. They're going to get a, a nice close one to 12 win. It's going to get you $7.19. Yep, nice. Uh, decent value. I've just gone for three try scorers again. Uh, a little bit of a theme this week. Taruva, To'o and Cleary. Fourteen ninety nine, but I guess uh, depending on what happens on Thursday night, that might just be winger, winger, and half yeah. back. <laughs> Jack, whoever, depend, whoever it Jack up Cogger. There. Yeah, but if Cogger's named at six, and then someone comes in to replace Cleary, is Cogger already named at six? Well, he surely would be because Lloyd's injured. Yeah, he yeah. is. So, it's, so it would be whoever's fucking like 19 or some shit. Sure. Tango's 19. There you go. Is it, it is like it? Salmon will come in and play six. I'm pretty sure he's a six going through the grades. And then 
um, Cogger would go to sell it. Although maybe they'd risk Cogger if I can otherwise it, you know? Like, yeah. yeah. But, Who knows? I don't know. You probably wouldn't see them strip all 13 starting players if Brisbane won. It might mm. just be like be, yeah, we were, all those origin yeah. boys, possibly. We were saying before we might just see an increase in grades, you know, sort of under sixes come out, play under sevens, so forth. Uh, so on and so up, forth, all, all the way up to first all grade. First grade, and then first grade play over 35s. And under sixes, they just have to default. Over 35s get all, on the bears all, all week. Yeah, under under sixes they just fucking I don't know, maybe they get the younger younger brothers. Don't they have to go up a grade? Yeah, but like that team though, you know what I mean? Because eventually you get down to that bottom well, team. They just fucking default. They just have to maybe have a default, yeah. But Raf, get the um the old toddlers out. Coach might get a bit fucked. Get the old toddlers out there. Yeah, get the tots. Um, uh, well, coach was fucked because I think the coach is probably playing for the under under twelves that weekend. You know, yeah. doing his fucking, you know, Duke of Ed or something like that. That's true, that's um, true. But uh, anyway, that's your Saturday. Well, that's not your Saturday, so that's we've got one Saturday. more to go. Uh, they've, they've, left, they've left us all last on Saturday. Yeah, they have. The Dragons um, up against the Knights is your last game of your Saturday. Yep. Um, as we said about the Dragons, probably um, a little bit better than expected. 18-6, um, they fell to the Warriors, but a couple of disallowed tries, and it could have been um, a different story if those uh, would have come off. Um, Newcastle, uh, on the other hand, they are coming in very hot on an eight-game win streak. 32 6 over Cronulla. I mean, in hindsight, it's probably fair enough. They're, they're playing really good footy. Um, harped on about it. Well, I have certainly. Uh, Cronulla can't beat a top eight side. Um, they have done a couple of times over the last few weeks, but Newcastle really uh, pushing the, the, yeah. the breakout at the moment in terms of their form as a on the trot premiership threat. A on the um, trot now. Yeah. Uh, only thing is, it's just as tough like. Pong is injured this week, which is really good for us. Um, Have they locked in their spot in the eight? Yep. Yeah. So, either even though even though you have locked in, you don't really want to be losing that eight game streak just before you go into finals footy. I think they might have named a pretty weak side because we were almost favourites. Scroll down just to where it says that. Outs, yeah. Gago Ponga. I don't know what happened to gay guy. He he's got scored out, so I'm pretty sure he's... Brazil, gay guy, and Crossland are being arrested. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they've got Fahmanu Brown coming. Yeah, interesting. Uh, not, not too much weaker, like... Yeah, I mean, they've still got a really good side, um, and, like, they're still favourites, so... It's going to be a tough one for the Dragons, but good signs that, I mean, hopefully we can finish our season with... Um, is it anyone's, remote. as far as you're aware, is it anyone's last game for the Dragons? Well, Ben Hunt will be hoping it's his, probably. <laughs> um, <coughs> anyone that's like locked down elsewhere for next year? Off the top of my head, no. Jaden Sullivan named in the reserves there. Sullivan's yeah. reserves, yeah. He'll be off to Wests. Um, yeah, don't know about the rest of them, to be fair. Whether I don't think there's any... Like, well, obviously... Oh, can you do a quick scroll up? Have we got... Is Talal being named? Or is he, I think he might be in the 19. He's in the 22. So we've got no one there either. Um, and their last game. Oh, yeah, no, we do. Dane Laurie. Dan Laurie at six, yeah. Dan Laurie's last game. Oh, get off that Zoom. No, we're all right. We'll leave it like that for now. Um, yeah. So, uh, no no last game. Just for those who are aware, if Chad Sullivan gets put into the squad, I highly doubt that happens. But um, I've actually picked, I've picked you with Dragons this week. Uh, it's a little bit out of left field. Uh, I don't think I've got on them for a wee while, but... With Ponga out, uh, Reston Frizzell, who I thought was one of their best there on the weekend. Uh, just, you know, I saw a little bit of value there. I've chucked in a couple of just sure, sure thing try scorers. So Dragons 1 to 12, Dom Young and Ravalawa, uh, and just under $9, eight ninety six. I like it. 
Um, hopefully it comes off uh, for you. Um, but as usual, I'm Ryan Dragons 13 plus, $4.25. Um, even though the odds are less, uh, I somehow see your one as being more likely as coming off, which uh, <laughs> doesn't really make much sense. But, uh, you know, two men gunning for that Ken Irvine medal. Um, and then a, a slim it Dragons is one is definitely more likely to happen than a big there's Dragons bound to be, away. There's the bound to be tries in this game, though, I think. Um, so there we go. That is your Saturday. Uh, now we get into our Sunday footy. Now two teams again that we can say goodbyes for this season. The Titans up against the Doggies now. Both teams coming in, uh, coming in off losses. Probably coming in quite deflated, ready for 2024 to roll on. How do you see this one playing out? Uh, probably, um... It's a bit of a... I don't want to call it a dead rubber. It's a little bit similar to maybe that Manly Tigers game, you know? Yeah, I mean, look, they both want to, I guess, play well for their fans, uh, put in a good performance uh, to remember going into next year, I guess, possibly helps, but don't know how much it helps when you when you got a few months in between, uh, probably a few new faces at both clubs as well. Uh, this one might be a game where we see a few last performances uh, for sides. This could be a, yeah, this could definitely be a game where we see a few uh, no, last performances. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but... Um, could very well have been Tino and Fafita's last games if they hadn't signed those deals. Uh, with, oh, one player who we won't see playing the NRL for a little while, Pango Jr., uh, not even named in the squad uh, yeah. for this weekend, so bye bye uh, to him. off to the boxing ring. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's an interesting one. Uh, this one here, I think, probably leaning towards the Titans. Yeah, I think yeah, Titans are definitely heavy favourites um, with the bookies. So it's hard to go past that with the the home advantage. I think they've definitely been in a lot more games this year than the doggies. Um, it's just a matter of. Yeah, put into that consistency together for the Gold Coast. But you think with the likes of uh, Fafita, uh, Tino, um, a number of strike options, uh, Karen Foran steering them around uh, against this doggy side at the moment, they, they should get the win. Uh, but you never know with the dogs. They can they can pull one out of the hat every now and then, uh, a good performance. Yeah, uh I mean, it's not really been the season that they would have hoped for. So, yeah, being able to... Both teams with big recruits, but sort of disappointing seasons. Yeah, so, uh, like you said, they'll be looking to finish off their season on a high. Um, I would love to finish off their seasons on highs as well. Now, a bit of dribble there, brother. Yeah, it's a wild mouthpiece. That's why I'm not a fan of these fuckers, man. They're, they're far too big. Where's, is my there straw? One, my other one has a straw. straw yeah. Face screen, yeah. Jesus, mate. Um, yeah, now this is a game where I'll be... Um, I've, 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 you've lost my, I've lost my track there watching that there. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I reckon this is... You, the name for this is just... It's a one foul swoop bet. It's, this is you're, going, you're coming in with one foul swoop. I've got two um, games left here to try and leave me in the dust. Uh, this game here, I, I, I this will get me into the lead. Uh, now I'm gonna work. I work us back. Now the value is one hundred and eight dollars and fifty five cents. That's your return here. Uh, Max King, he was my value booster. He was to get that up there. He's gonna cross the try line. Jamin Jolliffe. Is going to cross the try line. Two fours there for you. Two big boppers. Uh, and then to, to sweeten the deal a little bit, I've gone for two uh, well known try scorers. Uh, two double barrels as well. Hoping that swings something into the, into it as well. I don't know if that adds or decreases value. Maybe decreases based on the fact that they probably may, may be involved in winning a title uh, as a double barrel. Well, one you know, definitely has been before. You know? Um, so a lot a Lofi Khan Pereira and Josh Adokar are you two sweeteners there don't know how many we've seen this year triple triple digit returns um, not many if any I would say 
Um, but I whipped one out for this game. Hopefully this can come off. Um, yeah, it would be disappointing to lose the lead, um, as I said, in one foul swoop there. But what a way to be, do it. Yeah, it would be impressive. Uh, I would just, there's not much you can do apart from uh, sort of admit defeat uh, if you're landing bets like that. Um, but unfortunately, I'm only bringing you sort of a mega tenth of that value. Um, just scraping into the double digits there. Gold Coast 1 to 12 into the aforementioned Khan Pereira and then David Fafita as my little POD uh, there. $11 for cents. Nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing uh, wrong with it, but it pales in comparison. It does, it sure um, does. Uh, but you just sort of value it off. If you're looking at what a tenth of that here, we're looking at close to what a hundredth. Yeah, of of the return and this following one that is Sharkies up against the Raiders now uh, again two teams coming in off losses the Raiders times could be tough for them if they they drop from what sitting there at fourth I believe at one stage with a negative points difference yeah uh, there's still that chance that they don't make the eight obviously uh, I think will their fate be sealed for them by I think if they lose, yeah, but like, could it already be, could it already be, excuse me, done for them? No. Nah. No. Nah. So if they, it's in their hands. But if, if Cowboys win, they go above them on points difference. If Roosters win, they go above them on points difference. And if Rabbitohs win, they go above them on points difference. Mm. And one of Roosters and Rabbitohs are going to win. Yeah. Unless it's a draw. Exactly, yeah. So. We've only seen one this season, so. Uh, tough times for Canberra. They're going to have to go down to the Shire and pick up uh, the win there against Cronulla. But it is a Cronulla side uh, that did uh, suffer a little bit of a defeat. Uh, 26 points in the end, not really a little defeat. Yeah, they got um, pummeled, eh, to be fair. Coming up against a Newcastle side that to be fair, I don't think too many would have handled them uh, in that sort of form that they showed on Sunday afternoon, uh, particularly KP. Being particularly elusive, um, Maju, powerful as fuck. You know, it's just, it ruins. Saifidi was immense. Um, the whole team was pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, look, Cronulla, they'll, they'll have to suffer a very heavy defeat and then... I think the Chooks would have to pick up a huge one to overtake them and sort of knock them out of finals contention. Uh, same with the Cowboys, they'd have to pick up a big one over Penrith, so unlikely. But um, it could also happen for Cronulla. But, look, um, yeah, both teams will want to be finishing the regular season uh, with a win because for Canberra's sake it could mean the end of the season I altogether. Just, I just have this weird feeling you know that it's going to happen I, I, sort I just of final day heartbreak that, break, uh, that negative points difference just does it's not so not good. finishing in the top yeah, 8 at all uh, you've been pumped a few times throughout the year Cronulla at home um, yeah it's going to be it's going to be a tough one for the Raiders um, I, I'm, I'm going Sharkies I think yeah, I'm going Sharkies, um, and that's reflected in my tip. I'll, I'll get mine in first because you there's can, no point you can going, take the lead, yeah. going after you. Uh, 1 to 12 for Cronulla, $2.90. Hopefully a nice little banker to take me over um, a few dollars, but yeah, the stage is all yours, my friend. I've gone for another uh, four boat try scoring fest here. This is just going to be... This is going to crush the competition. This one is preposterous. Now, starting from the least, uh, least valuable to most, we'll start with Connor Tracy. He's my first try scorer. Not first try scorer, but he's my first try scorer. Uh, followed up there, Brandon Hamlin ULA. I actually believe he might not be second. I think I've just done two Sharks and two Raiders. Yeah. Connor Tracy, Brandon Hamlin ULA. Hudson Young and Corey Hawes, right? If all four of them can cross the try line, three hundred and nineteen dollars and sixty three cents. So automatically, like chucks, broken Ned. Chucks me in the lead there if that one comes off. 
I chucked on a little bit extra on my own, my own one on the side there with this. Uh, I think I doubled it up. Uh, uh, I've times it by four, I've gone up to four dollars, I believe. Uh, looking at you know, popping at about 1.2k return if it does come off. So, uh, would be an awesome way to finish off the regular season. I'd probably retire, uh, retire from betting after that. There, um, but well, that is our Sunday. Uh, it leaves us with the Eels, as we said before. We've already said goodbye to them. They finish up their season, they get the buy, the two points, uh, and they get the little rest. Who knows, is it post-Mad Monday? Is it pre-Mad Monday? Uh, it is post... Still yet to find out. Still yet to find out, but it is post a pretty solid shock win up against Penrith there last week, which was, um, yeah, sort of just came out of nowhere, I think, this one. Yeah, um, good way to end the season, but I suppose it'll be a little bit bittersweet knowing if they can why produce can that. Do, yeah, uh, why can we do that against Parker everyone else? missing out on the eight, uh, and they're only missing out on the eight by uh, the two points there, I think. In the end, so it is a bit of a rough one for Parramatta, but yeah, um, last year's grand finalists will know, will not be taking part in this year's finals, which um, we don't often get that, um, but I guess it shows how how tight it's been this year for that top eight spot, uh, those top eight spots. We've had a lot of swapping around, um, particularly from sort of third down to 12th, 13th even really this season. So yeah, um, unlucky Parramatta, I suppose, but that's probably enough in terms of rugby league football. Um, we're going to have a little look um, at the round ball code of yeah. uh, the Arsenal. Now, a little, little hack up, I suppose you could say, um, with a little two all draw at home versus Fulham. Yeah, now I managed to, you know, we said last week, you know, it's all not about staying up till kickoff, it's about staying up to the end of the game. I managed to, uh, I wouldn't say it was a purposeful nap, I did set about three or four alarms at like hour intervals throughout Saturday evening just in case I did fall asleep. Uh, I believe I did at some stage, I think I put myself down in the dark room there at Mosley and um, I might have dozed for maybe an hour, I think Joe said. I think he might have fallen asleep for a wee bit too, but we got to two, we made it there. Uh, yeah, a little bit of a hiccup. Um, not the best start. I thought of, I sort of thought I'd made the wrong decision by staying up, conceding that early goal there, what, first minute. Um, Weird one from Arteta, I think. You know, some interesting uh, interesting players and interesting positions this game here. Not too sure what Arteta's thinking really in this one. Yeah, it was um, very bizarre. We saw Thomas Partey again lining up at right back, which um, possibly led to the opener there for Fulham. Uh, a little bit of a vacant uh, channel that Saka tried to pass back into. Um, but yeah, I guess on the whole, it was sort of a frustrating day out for the, the Arsenal. We were either, you know, cocking up the finish at the end of some nice build-up play or uh, missing the the simple pass in the build-up play um, when there was something clearly on further ahead. So it's a bit frustrating, but um, a man that managed to sort of change our frustrations at least for... 15, 20 minutes or so was uh, Fabio Vieira off the bench for yeah. performance. Came, comes on for Kai Haver, Haver, Havertz who looked lost. Uh, didn't really look like he knew what he was doing out there on the pitch and Fabio Vieira comes on, uh, wins a penalty, uh, sets up another goal. Uh, had, a, had an awesome game there, a little cameo there off the bench. So, um, gives himself a good shot to be involved in the, in the squad there or thereabouts in some way coming up uh, United yeah, yeah. Monday morning a lot of talk that um, Havert sort of hasn't been hitting the mark which I sort of tend to agree with um, on, I a, just... on a numbers uh, you, you want someone to come in and dominate the game uh, for 70 million pounds but it is rough to sort of get on someone's back when they are coming in new to a team and expected to, to sort of take control when the, when there's guys like Odegaard and Saka and that running thing, so it is a bit harsh, I think. We've got to give him a bit more time, but I think also based on what Vieira showed, you, you can't leave him out for, for much longer. 
um, if he's going to be producing like that. Yeah, exactly. Possibly a little switch and rolls, you know. Vieira gets the start and habits, comes off the bench and gets a few cameos and builds up his confidence and form again. Um, don't know if we ever saw it really at Chelsea. Don't really pay too much attention to them, to be fair. Yeah, it's, I mean, we've, you know, we've seen bits of it, I guess, at stages where he's looked, looked awesome, but yeah, I just thought he looked really lost in this game here. I think, I think he, was, he, was, he was making good runs sometimes, um, but sometimes it was just sort of like getting some, in the way of the other. A couple of terrible passes, like a couple of, yeah, one that was a huge decisions. mistake that nearly led to a goal. Um, yeah. So I got to say, it's a bit sad, but me and Joe both celebrated, not celebrated, but we, we both cheered when, um, cheered when Habits got subbed off. Um, which is not something you really want to be doing for your own own team and uh, what's right at the beginning of the season. But, um, yeah, it was nice to see Fabio Vieira come on. He, he did, gave it a good shout. Um, and, yeah, who knows whether we see him uh, involved uh, in that starting 11 come uh, Monday morning there up against United. But um, it probably wraps us up for the Arsenal now. I also don't have have too much darts news for you, really. We had a few players' championships over the weekend. Uh, I know Gerwin Price took out one of them. He may have taken out both, possibly, if what I've seen is correct. Um, but I guess in darting news closer to home, uh, it actually happened prior to recording last week, but I don't think we shouted it out. I did hit my new personal best uh, at Birkenhead last week, uh, a nice little 15 dart leg, could have been a 13 darter. We went for the old Hundy 99, 140, 130 uh, to set up 32. Nearly went for the 180 and bust because I wasn't really paying attention. Uh, missed two darts at the double, one dart, absolute shock out. The little nerves, you know, thinking in my head, you know, come on, mate, you can do this. Uh, that third one slots it in there uh, in the correct bed. 15 data gave it a good guan um, uh, upon realisation, so it was cool. And uh, we've got the old knockouts tomorrow night of the Winter Series, so I'm getting my, my 180 badge, my first official Birkenhead 180 badge, which I'm quite looking forward to getting. So uh, I guess that is the most important data news we've got for you this week. Uh, as always, if you've made it this far, thank you for listening, thank you for tuning in, uh, indulging however you may do. Remember to give us a like, a comment, a five star. Send us in those fucking voice messages that we're still bloody waiting for. Uh, enjoy your week ahead. Enjoy whatever sport you're getting yourself into. Uh, and if you're having a punt, do so responsibly. And we'll, we'll see you here next week. Yep, sounds good to me. We'll see you then. Marshall skips away. Marshall skips away. Marshall's still going. Marshall's got Richards coming up outside. Now inside. Arsenal. I've gone through an entire league campaign without losing. Bennett and the Dragons win the grand final. Whips that one away and Kane Williamson and his team are now world test champions.